any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion carries. This time the meeting is open to the public and we do have a few guests with us. First one is Don Beanick and welcome Don. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful weather that's out there. The <laughs> Welcome, Don. You were helping to meet just about three years ago. I'm lucky to be here. Yep. Oh, we're, I'm Donald Bean. We're glad to see you. Yeah, I know you're glad to see me compared to uh, December 20th. Right. Of 19. Anyway, somebody asked me about the crosswalk in front of the post office because somebody was walking and he almost seen a lady get hit there by a car and they says, well, go to, the go to the crosswalk at the intersection. Shouldn't there be some kind of signage there that tells you that a crosswalk is there? So we'll definitely because take that under you can't consideration. Even, you can't we even see if there's one there. Usually at a corner they are. They did that up at the Webster School there. Lights or, I mean, you know, blinking lights. Flashing or something or like that because you, I just come now and I says, you can't even see it till you're sure. on top of it. I think it's a good good comment, and we'll, we'll write that down. Because I seen that in that. nineteen in the 1970s there someplace, two ladies got killed up at 6th Street and up there on, on 7th Avenue. Sure. Yeah. And then they moved that crosswalk for the school kids down, and there's a sign that says crosswalk ahead. Right. And there the speed limit's faster, too, about 40 right. miles an hour. Especially back. in areas that have a lot of traffic, you know, you got to get the attention right, to right. the crosswalk. So yeah. I think it's a good But comment. there you got parking on both sides at times, and uh, sometimes you don't see it until it's too late. And, right, uh, right. But I, didn't, I did stop one time I was coming this way, and then I didn't know if the guy was going west was going to stop for the per 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 pedestrian in this crosswalk. So, sure. And I said, should I have stopped or not? Well, yeah, you're supposed to stop, but... I was worried about that car coming from the opposite direction. He did stop, but you never know. Sure. So, okay, then, thank Good. you. Thank you. Uh, we have Sue, and we're talking about a community garden. Welcome, Sue. You can just come up to the podium and uh, welcome, and uh, welcome to our to tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Um, Maybe just say your address, where you're from. and Yeah. Uh, you got the address, right? Uh, 2469. Oh, yep. I do have it. I do have it here. Eastern. Okay. Yeah. I lived here for almost 30 years. And um, uh, our people, the Hmong community, uh, has grown a lot, uh, you know, the last several years here. And uh, we do a lot of uh, gardening for our family. Because we are, uh, you know, like we still like our food, and so um, it's really expensive to go out there. And also, we hear that, you know, when you buy it, when you buy the food from the farm market, a lot of people put a lot of pesticides, you know, on it. So um, we have a lot of uh, friends and members uh, in the North St. Paul Community Center are asking me um, to see if we, uh, how can we get. Um, some land from the city of North St. Paul since we are here. And uh, a lot of places, you know, um, they, they do give, uh, you know, like land for, for the people that live in that city to do gardening. So that's why I'm here. And uh, today uh, it's only last minute, so I am the only one here. But we have a lot of people sure. that are interested. And so that's why I'm here to see if you would grant us a land in in the city of North St. Paul to for us to do some, you know, some gardening. And uh, we could also donate it to the food shelf in here in North St. Paul too. I will coordinate that once we get that. So, sure. um, so, so that's why I'm here. Well, it's a good suggestion and I think uh, we've talked about it in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. I know the uh, Parks and Rec, we've uh, talked about possibly doing a community garden somewhere. We just don't know where, mm -hmm. you know, to have it because it's got to be a pretty substantial, you know, piece of property to allow, you know, for the growth of, you know, quite a bit of produce or 
what have you. But uh, yeah, we're definitely looking to that. We'll put it on our agenda. Yeah, because um, some other places they could give like 40 by 40, or some places they could get they get like 20 by 40 or something like that. Sure. To to uh, first, so if you yeah yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be a huge land. You know, I mean, if per person per person would be, yeah, it, if we have more, that'd be great. But if forty by forty. Awesome. Well, there's one spot, uh, Country Club Park. I know we looked at uh, yeah. at mm -hmm. some point to have, mm -hmm. and then maybe mm -hmm. Councilmember Cole could probably put that on his radar to look at that park to possibly put a community garden in, but I can't promise anything. I mean, yeah. I think there's options out there. Uh -huh. So um, how how do I follow up with this? I'm, I'm turning it over to <laughs> Council Member Cole. Okay. So he he's part of, he's the liaison for the park and rec. Okay. And I believe uh, if there's some open land, it would be part of a park. I want to make sure. Our Double check. I believe our next park and rec meeting one, two, three is the twenty third. Uh, Wednesday the twenty third, and I'll make sure that it gets on the agenda to be discussed. Oh, you know what? I bet we did. I bet we moved yeah, it. That is, I was I'll, I'll double check. We probably did move it up a week. Thank, thanks, Candy. Yeah. So should I come come here to find out about? Uh, the meeting uh, uh, so the city manager will have note of it and we're gonna t turn it over to the uh, the park and rec mm -hmm. to get it on their agenda mm -hmm. talk about it okay. uh, you may want to go to their their meeting if you Do would I, like. um, okay so um, it's someone's gonna forward this information to me uh, once uh, mm -hmm. something if you can lead us your contact information, we can absolutely I do forward that. you. I do have oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thing. The contact information we can forward right the information. There, but I don't have my uh, I don't have the email there. So why don't you add your email okay. to it, and then okay. we'll we'll turn it over to. Okay. So the next park and rec meeting is the sixteenth at six thirty here. Sixteenth, six thirty. Uh huh. Sixteen November sixteenth. And I think it's a great idea. We just got to find space and if it'll, if it'll work. And I think it would be very beneficial if you were able to make it. If you can't, that's understandable. I would like to. Because yeah. I'm sure that the, the Park and Rec Commission is going to have questions. You know, what, do you, what, what additional amenities do you need? You know, does there need to be water on the site? What, you know, you would, you would be able to bring a wealth more information than what I would be able to provide, so. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. But if the city of Nottingham Park could provide some, that'd be great too. Like, yeah. So. I'm assuming there's water there, but it's not a irrigated park. No. No. They have the building there. They, they have it there. I don't know if they have an outside spigot or not. I think it's worth looking into. Mm -hmm. So thank you. All right, thank you so much. Yep, thank appreciate you. it. Have a good thank night. Yeah. And we got uh, last one is Bob. <clears throat> Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Bob Van Knight with the car show. We finally wrapped everything up actually today, and we paid the city so they don't send Bubba out looking for us. Good, good. But I want to thank the mayor, the city council, the city manager, our maintenance, our, <clears throat> our police, our fire band. If we needed anything, they were always there. And then we pick on Carrie at times to help us out. You know, everybody's been there to help us, and that's what makes the show work. It isn't all our yellow shirts on the corner. We got to have everybody in the background. It's, it was a good season. We ended up with some excess money, and we've always looked for charities. Um, and I've, I got a grandson that goes to Cowan School. I haven't been involved in school stuff in a long time. We thought, hey, let's see about doing some Christmas for some of the kids. Well, I'll tell you what, I had a rude awakening. There is a lot of needy people in Cowern School and the rest of our schools. So we donated a pretty good chunk of money to them. I would like to see any other business or organization or individuals step up to whatever your school is and go talk to them because there's a lot of kids that ain't gonna have Christmas. 
Mm-hmm. But thank you guys, but no, we're off, to, we're back on our feet, we're doing well, and next year we'll be the 30th. Big celebrate fireworks. Well, we'll deal, we can do that in some of the big holes to be in Main Street. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bob, I just want to say the relationship between the city and the car show over the past you know, years has increased tremendously. We can't do it without you. You can't do it without us. And that relationship has, has grown, and you put on a fabulous show. It brings in thousands of people to our downtown. People love it. It's safe. Uh, it's for all family members. So I want to say kudos to you and to your team of We've, volunteers that you offer something that our city, that other cities don't have and other cities want. And it's it's really went well. And like I said we've got a damn good bunch of workers, and we got everybody here on board, and that plays a big part. It makes it makes it a lot easier when you can go. Oh God, I hate to go ask them because they're going to tell us to take a hike. Let's go. Oh, hey, come on, ask us. What do you need? Right. And maintenance has been just. Great to us. Right. But thanks, guys. Right. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have anybody on Zoom? Nobody on Zoom. Uh, we do have a public hearing, and I'll turn that over to City Manager Frandel. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just one item on the public hearing, and that's uh, tax increment financing, uh, the redevelopment, district number 4-12, the Lilly Billing Redevelopment Project. And then we got Michaela here from Baker Tilly to discuss that. Welcome, Michaela. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council, here tonight to represent the action item of the proposed tax increment financing redevelopment district number 4-12 um, to facilitate redevelopment of the Lilly Building and surrounding properties um, in downtown. Um, again, tonight before you is the public hearing to um, take any public comment. Following that, the action items are to consider adoption of the tax increment financing plan um, for the tax increment financing redevelopment district, as well as um, consideration for approval of the TIF assistance agreement um, between the City of North St. Paul and the developer um, 2515 NSP um, LLC. So tonight what I have before you is um, a short presentation, just kind of walking through the project, uh, summary of the, the financial details, and would be happy to address or answer any questions that you may have. So the project uh, before you, it's, it's approximately 82 residential housing units um, comprising a mix of studio one and two bedroom floor plans. The developer had provided or, or submitted a request for financial assistance to the city related to the financial gap of the redevelopment project. Their initial request was about 6.1 million and that was to assist with financing of the extraordinary redevelopment costs of the project. Um, this did require the creation of a redevelopment tax increment district, which does have a maximum term of 26 years, and that is 25 years of receipt uh, of um, increment after the first year. And the request is for pay-as-you-go financing, um, in which the um, developer would be reimbursed for certain TIF-eligible redevelopment costs of the project. Here's a, a map just showing the boundaries of the district. There are um, four properties, four parcel um, IDs that are included within the redevelopment district. It could be anywhere. Yeah. It's like a Rembrandt. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Or okay. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Sorry. Uh, I always have to um, do a quick primer on what tax increment financing is because even though I've been before, I think all of you a couple times talking about it, but it is a financing tool that cities use to capture the incremental um, growth resulting from a new development or redevelopment project. There is a fixed term for the capturing of the incremental taxes and then that new development tax capacity is added to the um, taxing base for the taxing entities. So the tax income revenues is generated by the increased value resulting from that new development or redevelopment project. And here's a little picture just showing that we, the base value, the green area, is the current value of the property. The taxes are frozen and continue going to the city, county, and school over the life of the tax increment district. 
the gray shaded area, that's the incremental taxes that um, are captured by the tax increment district to facilitate redevelopment of the project site. Once the obligations have been fulfilled, um, you'll see the, the green, the lighter green area, that is the new tax base that is available for all the taxing entities once the district has been um, decertified. There are only certain costs that we can finance with tax increment financing. Um, and they are typically public improvements, which could include streets, um, utilities, parking, sidewalks, um, land acquisition, soil correction, site preparation, and then um, parking costs. So really all of the costs um, prior to vertical construction of the, of the new um, project. Uh, there are financing options for projects, um, and you'll see both a combination of pay-as-you-go or upfront. In this case, uh, we are looking at pay-as-you-go in which the developer finances all of the costs upfront, and then a TIF note is issued by the city to the developer, and then the developer is reimbursed over time with available tax increments that are generated from the new redevelopment project, um, as opposed to upfront city financed in which the city um, finances a portion of the costs up front through either an interfund loan or um, the issuance of bonds. Again, the request tonight is for pay-as-you-go financing, which um, um, shifts or mitigates the risk to the city of participating in the project since the developer is responsible for obtaining the financing um, to do the project. This is just the sources and uses of funds uh, for the project. It is about a $25.6 million project that the developer is financing um, with a combination of, of bank financing and owner equity. And you'll see the uses of funds includes uh, the acquisition, the pre-development, the environmental construction, offsite improvements, and then some of the soft costs related to the project. The estimated TIF eligible expenses, again, the developer's request initially was for 6.1 million. Listed here are the categories of those costs, including acquisition of the property, environmental remediation, demolition of the um, existing substandard buildings, some public improvements, primarily parking and other um, improvements, site improvements to prepare the site for development. So the total of those is 6.1 million. The extraordinary costs and those deemed um, reimbursable through the uh, both available availability of TIF and the need for public assistance is 5.3 million. So that recommended amount as we'll get into the terms of the TIF assistance is for reimbursement of up to 5.3 of extraordinary redevelopment costs um, within these categories for the project. Here's just an outline of the tax increment revenue estimates. Um, the current taxable value that we've assumed is about 250,000 per unit for the 82 unit project. The existing base value um, today is about 1.6 million. The total estimated taxable value upon completion is about 20.5. And over uh, the, the annual increment upon full build out, it's about 328,000. Over the life of the district, it's estimated to be about 11.696 million. Um, we have structured that the city would retain a percentage of the annual increment for um, either administrative or other redevelopment um, activities within the district. So that amount is about, or excuse me, in the project area. So that amount is about 1.76 that's retained by the city, leaving 9.9 .9 available um, to the developer. And again, the estimated present value of that amount um, over 26 years with 4.25% uh, interest rates, 5.3 million. Just a reminder, so the project area, development district number four, this is the area in which um, a portion of the tax increment dollars can be spent from um, individual tax increment districts. The boundaries of your development district number four, the project area are coterminous with the, the boundaries of the city. Um, the tax increment district before you, TIF number 4-12, is created within that project area. And the TIF plan that you're being asked to consider um, contains the budget, the, the estimated um, total development costs and sources of revenue, the geographic boundaries, and the purpose and statutory authority for which the district's being created. Uh, the second to last step is a public hearing, which is the action tonight. Following that, assuming creation of the district, the county certifies the district and becomes the administrative authority um, or administrator of the district um, in the future tax increments. In order to qualify as a redevelopment district, and there was a study that was done by LHB to determine qualification, at least 50% of the buildings within the district are considered substandard. Um, and that means that at the cost of um, renov or bringing the buildings up to a uh, combination of code and condition deficiencies is greater than 15% of the cost of, re of replacing that build those buildings. 
And uh, the next test is that at least 70% of the area within the district is occupied by um, uh, buildings, streets, parking lot, uh, not green space. And lastly, the, the substandard buildings are reasonably distributed throughout the district. There are, as I mentioned, four parcels that are included within the district, and this is from the tax increment financing plan um, listing those parcels. I mentioned the budget. Again, the total um, estimated public cost is the $11.696 million, um, with a breakdown between the acquisition, site improvements, public improvements, and then um, administrative expenses. Sources and use, or excuse me, the sources need to equal the public cost, so the total estimated tax increments is, again, $11.696 million. So how we got to the $5.3 million um, recommendation is there is a financial review that's done um, to determine, one, if the project as proposed would be unlikely to proceed but for the use of the tax increment financing tool, and if assistance is deemed necessary to determine what the appropriate amount in terms of that public assistance are. So prior to approving the tax increment district, there are findings that need to be made. One is that the project does qualify as a redevelopment tax increment district. Um, two, that the project as proposed would not proceed but for the use of tax increment financing. And three, the increased market value of the property um, to be developed is greater with the use of tax increment financing than if no assistance had been provided. Again, these are the parameters that were used when, um, rec when determining what the recommended amount of tax increment assistance is for this particular project. And there's a range of, of items that we look at in understanding that assistance is necessary and if it is, um, what an appropriate level would be based on the, the level of public and private investment and the level of extraordinary costs. So switching gears to the terms of the TIF assistance, again, the total development cost is estimated to be 25.6, um, and I, I do believe the costs have gone up from that, but that was the initial estimate provided. Again, the developer is responsible for financing the, um, all of the upfront costs. The TIF increment um, would be provided as reimbursement to the developer for those certain TIF eligible expenses. Um, following completion of the, the project and um, uh, meeting the terms of the agreement, the city would issue a pay-as-you-go note to the developer for up to $5.3 million with the 4.25% interest rate. It is a maximum 26-year term of assistance with semi-annual payments uh, made to the developer pursuant to the terms of the agreement, um, with the anticipated first payment being August 1st of 2025, and in the maximum 26 years, the final payment would be February 1st of 2051. So with that, um, I'd be happy to answer any questions or step aside for the, the public hearing um, as the council would choose. Any questions for Michaela? Uh, good presentation. I know a lot of work has gone into putting that together. So, uh, so at this time, we'll open the public hearing up at uh, 6.59. Is there any comment from the public? Uh, Michaela's here to answer any questions. Anybody on Zoom? Nothing. So at this time, we'll close the public hearing. And uh, you're looking for, I believe, two resolutions. Let me get that here real quick here. So the first resolution is uh, establishing the tax increment financing uh, for redevelopment district number 4-12 within development district number 4, approving the tax increment financing plan, therefore, and authorizing the interfund loan. That is the first motion. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. First resolution, I should say. I'll make a motion. Uh, yeah. Moved by Councilmember Peterson. Second. Second by Council Member Cole. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. <laughs> the uh, second one is uh, resolution authorizing execution of a TIF assistant agreement. Is there? So moved. Move. So moved by Council Member Cole. Second. Second by Council Member Wong. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. 
So I think we got it all in order. And uh, Jim, I know you're in the audience, and if you want to say a few comments, I'd uh, love to have you come up. And the city really appreciates uh, the uh, development that's going to be happening in our town, and we welcome you and we welcome meeting. the families that are involved. And yeah, the, uh, we're really excited. You know, that's um, the city and Michaela and Morgan and all the other staff has been so professional and so helpful to us, and we're so grateful for your support. And um, we were chatting before the meeting started, and we started looking at this project. I remember interest rates being like mid threes, and now they're almost double that. So your help, if, if you didn't help, we wouldn't have a project. So really just thankful for everybody's hard work and well, we're gonna keep hard, working hard too to get going on the thing. And we've heard a lot of good things about you and, and your team and you know, it's a good fit for our city and you know, what we're gonna have the, in the downtown. You know, we are going through a renaissance down there. Oh, it's fantastic. I, I think I mean, you're- like I said, our first meeting is the hidden, hidden gem down here. And right. so we're so thankful to be able to have this opportunity too. And I think that building really fits in the downtown and it's gonna be exciting and yeah. people are really gonna uh, come to our town and, and see, uh, I, I, I think, a, a redo of, of, our, of our downtown. Yeah, so, really thank, excited, so thank you. Th thank you, thank Keep you. Keep working hard every day. All right. All right, thanks. Uh, so yeah, it's a big milestone for us uh, for this uh, project uh, moving forward. And Jim, it, so you would start the process, I would assume, fairly soon. And when do you expect maybe the uh, buildings to have some sort of uh, taken down or, or sure, what have you? Sure. Well, we're scheduled. Uh, maybe right just now. go there through the some, process of what. Yeah, there was some there was some litigation about tenancy in one of the, in the Lily Building that's been resolved. Um, so we're going we're scheduled to close on that property about no November 15, and then we have a couple things with Mr. Peachy to work out, and he, we're hopefully closing with him in uh, beginning to mid December. As you know, we filed some grants uh, for some of the pollution and other things. Some of those grants we have to wait until there's a technically an award before we can do anything. Otherwise, the eligible costs aren't eligible costs sure. anymore. So depending upon that timing, I mean, in perfect world, we'd go and we remediate and then rip the buildings down. And but anyway, I would anticipate you'd see the buildings come down sometime in the first quarter of 2023. Yeah. Good. Based on that, so. But people will be looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a couple parties along the way. Right, <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, okay. thank you. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, get back to the agenda here. So I'll, we don't have the uh, item number nine. We move that to the, uh, oh, no, 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 we do have the public comment. So we do have the public comment for the unmanned aerial vehicles. The only reason we're keeping it on here is in case there's somebody in the public that came to the meeting that wanted to be heard tonight. And I think we'll just continue that public comment until the next meeting also. So if there's anybody in the audience that would like to talk in regard to the unmanned aerial vehicles, or if there's anybody online that needs to talk about it, they can do, do so at this time. So there's nobody here, so I'd like to make a motion to uh, extend a... To continue the public comment period till your next meeting uh, when the action item will also be on the agenda. Okay, so we need a motion for that, uh, to for continuance of the public comment. So moved. Moved by Council Member Wong. Second. Second by Council Member Cole. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion carries. And then we're into city business and action items, and I'll turn it over to uh, City Manager Frandall, and we did uh, remove the uh, item A for the unmanned aerial vehicles, so turn it over to uh, City Manager Frandall. All right, next up is the 2020 Street and Utility Improvement Project, uh, which is approved of the pay voucher number 14 and final. We got Mr. Morgan here, our city engineer, to discuss that. So your son doesn't get to see you actually in work now. You actually sent him away and told him to, you know, don't watch me work or uh, how, yeah, what happened? Bill of, of civic information, I think, for the evening. And 
spared himself, I guess, from seeing his dad in the hot seat. I don't know. Yeah. We just wanted the dirt on you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now it's, yes, uh, it's, it's uh, free, uh, free open season on, on your city engineer here tonight. So, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, this item before you tonight is uh, to consider a resolution which is um, accepting uh, the, the 2020 Street and Utility Improvement Project in finality and it's authorizing the final payment. Um, you may recall that this project uh, included improvements primarily on 7th Avenue between um, 1st Street and uh, 3rd Street um, and also sections of 2nd Street and 4th Avenue as well too making improvements to the roads, uh, sidewalks, underground utilities, water, sewer, that sort of thing. Um, a major component of the funding for this project was state aid funds, municipal state aid funds. The city was granted in advance for um, portions of this project funding, also for the McKnight Road project, which was completed and finaled out earlier. Uh, so that was a big part. That explains a lot of the numbers that you see in the designation for the project. Those are all uh, state aid designation uh, numbers that allow uh, MnDOT and the state to be able to track those funds along with the different projects. Um, so as we final these contracts, um, you know, one of the things that the city engineer needs to report on is how things turned out. Um, and one thing that I do need to report on is an overage with respect to uh, the final contract amount. Uh, this is something that I think that, you know, based on my conversations with the city manager, finance director, something that we want to do more thoroughly and completely on all projects moving forward and maybe even in real time not waiting for the final payment. Um, but all of the things that are included in the project and that were completed by the contractor have been finalized, they've been accepted by the city or by the city forces. Uh, as being complete and now, you know, if this council resolution is adopted, then the project would move into a warranty or maintenance period and there is a, a warranty and maintenance on workmanship and materials on this and, and all of our city projects that will be inspected following the end of that. So if there are issues, you know, there will be an opportunity to correct those before the end of the maintenance period. Um, we're here at the end of 2022, and this was a 2020 project, so not a lot has happened this year. There's a little bit of punch list work that the contractor needed to complete earlier in the construction season, um, but mostly we were waiting for the contractor to get their paperwork together. There's certain forms that are identified in the staff memo that they need to submit for our financial audit uh, to make the contract whole before we'll take a, a final payment to the council for consideration. Um, but back to the reporting. So the final contract amount does reflect uh, about a 6.5% increase over the, the contract amount. Um, that can be explained because this is a, a, a per unit type of contract. It's not a lump sum. So if there's more of a quantity of a specific item that goes over the original estimated quantity of that item, so square feet of sidewalk, for example, uh, and the contractor is directed uh, and needs to complete that amount of extra work to finish the contract, that explains why some of those amounts go over. So it's all in the framework of the, the contract. Right, now on a typical project, we anticipate that uh, we would, um, within 5%, um, hopefully come across those unexpected or unanticipated things that might result in an overage. If all goes perfectly, we may see contracts, and we have had them here in North St. Paul where we come in under. Uh, but certainly going over uh, bears some explanation to the council. And so um, there are basically kind of two categories as I see it, which are reported in the memo here. Some of these things are, are state aid eligible items. So th those would be things that are above ground and adjacent to the streets on the state aid streets. Um, we did do some extra sidewalk work, which was directed to, to uh, extend some of the concrete sidewalk removal and replacement because out, just outside of the project limits, there were some areas that um, could have been replaced and had not been identified prior to the project. So some additional public improvements were made and that certainly cost some money. Uh, there were also some extension of new sidewalks uh, in the vicinity of the, the old workforce center across from Burwalds on 2nd Street uh, to bring that sidewalk up to 4th Avenue. You may recall that uh, it was previous city council, um, but there was discussion about eventually reaching that sidewalk on 2nd Street up to the Gateway Trail and to Rotary Park. And so that would 
need to be something that would have to happen in the future. So we didn't authorize getting it all the way there, but there was a little bit extra extension to get the sidewalk that was originally planned within the project past the workforce center and up to at least 4th Avenue. Um, using uh, street maintenance funds, we also did improve uh, as a just a maintenance overlay or an overlay 4th Avenue and 2nd Street from basically about the workforce center, which is where the reconstruction portion project ended, and we extended that all the way to North St. Paul Drive. That was all planned for. Um, if people don't know, the workforce center is now the food shelf. Oh, that's right, and I knew that, but oh. I didn't know that. I should be referring to it as the food shelf. No, I think more there. most people would know, you know, the workforce center, but you know, I think there's people out there now who right. see it as the food shelf. And I guess, and that's worth mentioning. I mean, so some of the extra work that was done was to facilitate uh, pedestrian access and also ADA accessibility access into that building, which at the time was vacant, but planning for future. Um, occupancy and, and access from the, the public way to the, the property building. So and that, that was included in some of these overages uh, that I mentioned as well too. Some of it are not really falling in that, that state aid category. Um, well, I, before I move on from the state aid category, we did have some poor soils underneath the road, both on First Street and um, uh, and on Second Street, I believe, too. So we come across those occasionally where we need to actually get the bad clays out of there and get in some good material. Um, as far as non-state aid eligible um, things, we did find on the water main replacement with this project, which we did replace a lot of old water main that was ready for uh, replacement, having had experienced a lot of breaks in and around the area. But in order to isolate that system to be able to replace it, you have to close valves. Well, as we got out there and started to close valves, some of those valves broke or they could not, they weren't turnable. They were so old that we couldn't actually isolate the system to replace the system on the inside, right? So even before we started on a lot of the water main work, we had to do a lot of valve replacements in and around the area, and we actually even had a water main break that we had to direct the contractor to go and fix to be able to, to make that um, a whole project. Um, there are some other little things, but it all does add up where uh, some of the electrical primary line on the north side of 7th Avenue was just too close to where the pole bases for city street lights needed to go. And so kind of a special construction technique was necessary to be able to pour those in place instead of using the standard kind of precast bases. That cost some additional money as well too, which was included in change order. So all that together um, does you know, result in some overage that takes us above that planned 5% contingency. Again, 6.5%, the, the, the dollars have been spent. I mean, the, the amount authorized with this final contract pavement is um, primarily just releasing the retainage, which has been held back until the, the project is ready to be accepted by the city. Um, so basically, as we get to this point, we're not asking for authorization on these overages, but it, they have been um, realized at this point, and this is simply a report to the city council at this time. So with that, I'll stand for any questions, but again, the, the recommended action is to adopt by resolution the, the final, um, or to the approval of the final pay voucher number 16 to T.A. Shifsky and Sons in the amount of $92,527.08 for the 2020 Street and Utility Improvement Project. And um, if adopted again, this will move the project into the maintenance and warranty period. The contractor has supplied a warranty bond uh, to secure the workmanship and materials on the project during that maintenance period. So with that, I'll stand for any questions. Any questions for Morgan? Uh, if not, off on a side, you guys do extremely good work for us. I just want to tell you that. that uh, the relationship is really good with the city, and uh, your your professionalism is is very very good. So thank you. It's an honor to serve the city. Thank you, oh. Mr. Mayor. Uh, so at this time, uh, motion uh, for a resolution authorizing final payment for the 2020 Street and Utility Improvement Project. So moved, Your Honor. Moved by Council Member Peterson. Second. Second by Council Member Wong. Any discussion? 
If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion carries. It's funny, it was two years ago, the start of that project. So. Takes a while, but thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Uh, CD Manager Frandall. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. So reports of City Manager and Departments. Uh, I'll start off with Dan and his department of upgrading the ENCODE system. Ran all their checks on the system from payroll to invoices to accounts payable. Uh, everything checked out very well. They handled it great. Uh, their department all came together and ran the system checks and everything turned out well. It was a good upgrade. Now we'll move on to the, the new upgraded software shortly, right? And now that we're on the new system. So, but everything went well. So kudos to you guys, thank you. Um, so the, the electric department is doing pole change out still. <clears throat> uh, only had a couple left before the frost sets in. Uh, we did have a, a large power outage on Saturday morning, probably about 25 after four or so. Uh, a pole going down highway, or a car going down highway 120 drove through a utility pole, which is no small feat. Those are 55 foot poles, so the bases are rather large. Um, and amazingly enough, it didn't take the power out at that point. Uh, the pole was broke and kind of leaning to the side. Um, we have an, uh, Excel Energy has a uh, three phase power on the top of that pole and we have underbuild underneath that. And when the pole leaned off to the side, the wires were actually touching and it didn't burn to the ground uh, due to the insulation that was on the wire. We just got really lucky with that. That would have been a long outage. <clears throat> but in working uh, with Excel Energy, the electric department did a great job in coordinating the power outage because they had to take their circuit out at the same time we had to take our circuit out so we could get that stood back up so we didn't have a huge ball of fire up there. Um, and you're, outage. You're talking electronic, electric terms now that, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, no. I don't even realize it when I say it, sorry. <laughs> so we, they took the systems out of power, uh, you know, got a hold of the pole, straightened up, and then they were able to set a new pole in later. But the they were able to transfer some of the load that was on that circuit so it wasn't as big of a power outage as it could have been. Um, and the power outage was less than an hour. I think it was more like 50 minutes maybe. So they did a really good job in getting that back online and controlling a situation that could have been really bad. <clears throat> um, we're still working on trying to get uh, quotes and orders for equipment, which is still an issue. Um, they're, they're opening it up for, well, it could be as little as one day uh, until the amount of quota that they have available gets ordered. Uh, so half-ton trucks, for example, they're not even taking orders anymore for the 2023s. They're going to the 2024s. They're so far backed up. Um, so we're issues for, with Public Works and Electric trying to get newer vehicles that are due for change-outs um, according to the SIP plan that uh, we're just not being able to do it in a very timely fashion, so it's going to be a while as we get those change-outs taken care of. But not only just trucks, but, you know, we're looking at generators, and they're, they're out of ways. Um, we're just seeing it in every aspect. Um, Public Works is still uh, doing flushings, and they're on their second round of leaf pickup around town with their street sweepings, so they're doing good with that. Hoping to be finishing that up this week, I even believe. Um... I think that's all I have. Anything on the downtown? Is the downtown plantings, are they all taken care of now and the irrigation is all in? And So the sleeves are in. Maybe, Morgan, do you know more about that? Do we have the sleeves in? Have they been working on the actual sprinkler system now? the same as last time so it's not done the sleeves are in uh, portions of or maybe almost all of the irrigation is in not all of the plantings are in but they're very close okay. um, so kind of the same status as last time but uh, I don't think that following <coughs> the completion of their work we're going to have any outstanding items we expect it to be wrapped up and the weather's been cooperating so yeah. far for us, so far so good thank you May for a little more clarity with that, when we say the sleeves are in, what they do is they bore in a conduit um, from <clears throat> plantings to plantings, um, and then what they'll do is they'll cut into that pipe, and then they'll run the 
irrigation piping through there and then put sprinkler systems in those different plantings. But they're getting really close on that. We've had a lot of questions in regards to uh, Eldridge area. To, uh, they're doing a lot of relo uh, locations for water and our whole streets are marked up, up and down the street. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I will have to look into that for you and oh. get back to you. What comes all it comes two blocks away yep. from the home from the student build all in the street uh, belmont eldridge i'm not sure i have Is not it Maplewood reviewed a right away permit Maplewood? for like the gas company i mean it would typically be related to some sort of utility work is, you know, planning something. If it was near the, you know, student-built home, I would expect it would be related even to close. extension of services there. But, um, yeah, we'll have to look more into yeah. that. I'm, I'm not aware of a specific hmm. activity that... You can do it, though. I'm curious now. Somebody would be doing. Yeah, we'll look into it. The whole street, uh, all the way up the street, is all marked up. So, hmm. okay. okay. Nothing further. We got uh, Reports of council, commissions, and committees. Council Member Cole. Um, the Park and Rec had their meeting on the 26th. Um, had a lot of good dialogue as far as what was going on in forward planning. Uh, they did come to a resolution that that should be in front of us at the next meeting regarding Housie Park and um, fixing the tennis court and reappropriating the space to um, primarily pickleball. Um, as well as putting an ADA trail that would then connect the pickleball court with the picnic pavilion, the picnic pavilion with the um, shelter, the, the regular, the regular enclosed pavilion that's there. Currently, there's only um, ADA sidewalk from the street to the actual enclosed pavilion, so this will connect the the whole flow through there. Um, it will be an expensive project, but it's, an, it's a project that, that the Park and Rec feels and deems important, especially due to its location to downtown. Uh, next Park and Rec meeting will be the 16th uh, at 6.30 here in Chambers, and one of the items will be the Country Club Park and turning it into a public garden area. It's on my agenda. Good. <laughs> uh, EDA's meet next, up, next upcoming meeting is the 15th here in Chambers at 3 o'clock. And that would be it for me. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Wong. Sure, yeah, not a whole lot of new updates. Um, the Arts and Culture Commission um, uh, has a meeting this Wednesday at 6.30 here in Sandberg Room. Um, they'll continue talking about Project Snowy and um, moving that project forward. Um, in regards to the Planning Commission, the next meeting here will be um, Thursday, um, November 3rd. Um, here in the chambers at 6.30. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Peterson. Business Association meeting will be, uh, luncheon will be November 8th, next Tuesday, and it'll be a banking, um, the Old National Bank, Premier Bank. We'll have bankers there, and they're going to discuss, what are they going to discuss, Terry? Uh, commercial banking. Commercial business, banking. For the businesses. For the businesses. So that'll be at noon at the Legion Club. That's all I have. Thank you. General Business, Council Member Cole. Um, I have nothing really at this time. On my assumptions, you'll cover off the ribbon cutting that was done last week. So I will, uh, I, I will grant my minutes to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, General Business, Council Member Wong. I have nothing. Thank you. Council Member Peterson. Well, with all your little jack-o'-lanterns, you can recycle them down by the uh, museum there on 6th or 7th and Henry by the museum, and that uh, will be until November 6th, and it goes to a farm, so the, um, the pumpkin gets used again. So it's a good way to recycle um, those pumpkins. That's all I have. Not reused for Halloween, but reused no. for... <laughs> they get <laughs> Uh, so I'll mention the Anchor View uh, ribbon cutting. We had a uh, Council Member Cole, Council Member uh, Peterson, Senior Manager Frandall. Uh, we had uh, the uh, team from the Anchor View. They hosted uh, kind of a reception for us and uh, very well attended. And I thought uh, if you get a chance, go down there and take a look at it. Apartment buildings nowadays 
aren't built like they used to be. I mean, this is a place where there's entertainment, there's meeting rooms, there's, you know, uh, places f to uh, work out. I mean, it's a billiard room, you know, it's, it's fun places to live. And I know when I was back in college or whatever, apartments were just apartments and you didn't have all these amenities, uh, but you do pay for them. So, uh, but they're over 50% rented so far and uh, the response is, uh, very, very good down there. So they're they're very happy with with uh, the outcome so far. So other than that, uh, City Manager Frandel. I'd like to add one more thing, if I could, please. Um, I had asked WSB to help us out with a couple of grants that are available, and uh, since we have Morgan here, I'd like him to shed a little light on that, please. Oh, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. So just this is informational um, sure. things that we're working towards, uh, and. I guess maybe there's three things. One of them is not necessarily grant related, but uh, Washington County and, and other folks uh, in and around the Trunk Highway 120 corridor, and there have been past discussions about potentially looking at forming um, a group or a coalition that might involve a couple different agencies. And so uh, staff will be meeting with some other folks to kind of see what that might look like, who might represent uh, the city of North St. Paul as that moves forward. So that's kind of a nice thing that, you know, um, Across borders, there's going to be a group of people looking at future improvements on 120. Related to that, but not exactly the same, uh, and this is m part of what Brian was getting at, um, there's a Corridors for Commerce program that MnDOT is uh, going to be soliciting for um, funding for major projects, and I can't remember how many millions of dollars, but several hundreds of millions of dollars will be made available to uh, projects throughout the state. And um, you might recall that the city of North St. Paul did support uh, uh, by resolution a previous submittal for those types of funds for the uh, uh, planned interchange at 120 and 36. And so Washington County has reached out and said that they are looking to submit another application for corridors of commerce funding for a new interchange at uh, 36 and 120, similar to last time. Um, that will likely uh, require a resolution of support from the city council as well, too. Uh, we'll find out more, I think, in the December, November, December, January timeframe, but we'll be back in front of the council uh, probably explaining that process as we learn more from Washington County, but the fact that they're looking at backing that project is certainly uh, positive from getting that support at the county level above the local city level. Uh, as well, too, to see if there could be uh, some success. My recollection on the ranking of projects for Corridors for Commerce last time was that uh, the inter our interchange project did well, but it didn't quite meet the cut. And so um, it very well, well may be that uh, we will fare better and possibly you know high enough to actually receive some funding, which would uh, be a significant thing to potentially move that project forward. And finally, um, there was also uh, what's called an active transportation grant solicitation that is being promoted by uh, MnDOT throughout the entire state for communities to look at making improvements for active living and mostly pedestrian or bike related improvements. Um, and so uh, when that solicitation came out, I consulted with the comprehensive plan and found kind of a, a tier one or a high, high priority sidewalk project, which is on the north side of 11th Avenue, which actually was previously discussed by the city council back in 2014 or 15. And so um, we submitted a, just a letter of intent to see if the feedback was positive. Uh, and we did receive uh, information back saying that uh, the project would meet eligibility. So I think the plan will be to submit an application in December. Um, and if we do receive funds for that, that would uh, install sidewalk, again, north side of 11th Avenue from McKnight to Ariel, which would kind of connect a few different sidewalks in the area, including the most recent one that was built on Ariel from um, 11th Avenue up to 17th Avenue, and might be a, a nice connection to make. Um, and that would have to be constructed, I think, before the end of 2024. So although that's not been on any of our capital improvement or fiscal plans. We'll just have to see if the funds uh, can be acquired and we'll have to make some decisions moving forward after that. But just wanted to report that as a, an opportunity, at least that's out well, there. That's good news because it's, you know, those are things that, you know, that we have to go out and look for, you know, funds that do these extra projects that uh, enhance our walkability. Right. 
And the, the dollars are there now, I think, just from my perspective and seeing the solicitations, there seem to be more and more often now than there have been in the past. And as you, Wayne Gretzky said, you, you miss 100% of the shoots you don't take, uh, shots you don't take. And so, you know, we're, I think it, it's important to be able to see them where they're out there and find projects where we can, right. where they make sense. And, uh, and I always want to keep on the radar the east side of Silver Lake for connection of the trail. At some point, whether or not that's included in the 36 project or, or not, but I and think that will be key to that that corridor coalition for Highway 120, and um, right. it's something that the city of North St. Paul has advocated for strongly in past meetings, and and will continue to do so, especially through that coalition, which right. that could be wrapped into larger projects. Um, and th could be teed up if an interchange is is constructed. For example, it'll be important to make sure that. Um, that interacts well with those kind of other plans up and down the the 120 corridor as well too. It's not just about that intersection. Right. Good. Thank you. Oh, we do have uh, on Friday, uh, November 11th, uh, Veterans Park is hosting a uh, Veterans Day. Uh, uh, Six gun salute and uh, prayer and a little little bit of a format of a, a Veterans Day ceremony at eleven o'clock on the eleventh eleven eleven. So with that, uh, I just want to remind everybody to vote next Tuesday the eighth. Right. Make sure you uh, privilege to vote and just remind you to go out there and vote. Good point. Uh, at this time, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved by Councilmember Peterson. Second. Second by Councilmember Cole. Any discussion? That was on the consent agenda. <laughs> He's out of order. Uh, so the motion has been made. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.